Congratulations, graduates. And uh, two girls. Well, I'm so excited this afternoon. You know, um, if, um, if I'm not given a chance every Sunday to teach and preach, I think one of the, the other speaking engagements I would like to endeavor uh, is to speak on uh, commencement exercises. That's, that's my passion to, that God would use me mightily to encourage our graduates because I know it's very important for us and for each and every one of us to understand the importance of going out there in the world after we have achieved uh, what God has given us, the tools that we needed. You know, school will not give us everything that we need in life. It merely gives us the tools. It's very important, but there is more to life than what we can achieve if we use them mightily. You know, this afternoon I'd like to, to have this mindset that as we give tributes to our graduates and achievers, let us put in mind that our disposition is for us to be very thankful to God for His providence and guidance, you know, the divine wisdom. I hear my voice, I hear some echo, I think. <laughs> there's divine wisdom, uh, there's the, this uh, provision of God for us to continue, uh, but at the same time, I would like us to to be encouraged on what God would tell us in some of the portions of scriptures uh, that He will give us this afternoon. Church, uh, there was this story where <clears throat> there's this tourist attraction in the Alps. I'm not sure if uh, some of you have been there. But according to the brochure, there's this uh, attraction. Uh, for some of you, uh, I'm not sure if I can include myself. So some of you that really would like to go on hiking, I know that there's a place here uh, by Mission Peak that most of you have, uh, I guess, uh, accepted the challenge and I saw a lot of pictures posted in Facebook of ha you know, having that uh, trophy uh, when you reach the, the peak of Mission Peak, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken. But in the Alps, it's about an eight-hour uh, eight hike. So according to the guide, there was probably in, in a day two dozens of hikers excited in the morning uh, to hike up in the mountains in the Alps. And according to the guide, there's probably six uh, or half a dozen guys. They, they have all their gears, the backpacks, uh, water, uh, packed lunch, and first aid that will be distributed. So the first hour of hike, everybody's excited, right? The younger uh, men and women would encourage the guide to increase the pace. And there will be probably a couple of people would start to sing songs. By the second hour, uh, the, the incline of the, of, of the hike becomes steeper. And I guess uh, the encouragement of the young people to increase the pace, you would not see them encouraging those guides anymore. Breathing is becoming uh, harder because of the thinning air. And by the third hour, everybody's trying their very best to just keep pace. And by the fourth hour, they, be, they were able to, uh, I guess, arrive on the half or midway point of the hike where there's some restrooms and a shade and water to drink. So there's a, the women lined up in the ladies' bathroom. They immediately, you know, tossed their backpacks and started eating their lunch. So after lunch, the tour guide, you know, I guess, uh, gave his pep talk and he said, at this point in our hike, all of you did your very best. You were able to achieve half point of what we call the Alps uh, hiking trail. Uh, but I guess there's a, an hour and a half more of hiking to be done. And I need to tell you that if you would like to stop at this point, uh, we have enough shade, enough water for you to do that. It will probably take us shorter to come down, so you'll probably be here around two to three more hours. I guess most of the, of the hikers were determined, no, we can do it, we can make it, but there's like a half a dozen would always look around and look, the, look at their legs, and uh, eventually they decided that they will stay. So they were so cheerful, I guess sending off um, a, a a dozen and a half people to hike, and I guess they, they stayed behind and they were so happy to stay behind. I'm not sure if I'm, I will be, if I give them the opportunity, I'll be one of those who will stay behind. But after an hour and a half, they started to look 
up the, the mountains and they can see, you know, the hikers were able to reach the peak and everybody were, were jumping for joy. Everybody was cheering or were cheering and they, they were looking at the magnificent view of the Alpine Meadow. So they waited for an hour and a half more. They reached, you know, the, the group that were able to make it on the top. They came back and they, they made their way back to the ground. Hold that thought. We will come back, you know, to this uh, story as we move along with our message this afternoon. Church, today we're going to try to give tribute to our graduates and achievers. This Sunday, as you can see on our, uh, I guess, um, decorations here up on the, our pulpit, that today it's their day. And I tried to find a portion of scriptures fitting right, that uh, would like me, uh, that God would like me to, to encourage the graduates and our achievers. And I found this portion of scriptures in Matthew chapter 14. Uh, you would probably say, why did we pick this or why, why did God allow us to, to read this and study this, this this afternoon? But let me give you the background on Matthew chapter 14 on what this scripture is about. This scripture is about uh, Jesus Christ walking on the water. Uh, the, the background of this story Jesus just heard, if you read Matthew chapter 14 in the upper portion of this chapter, right? Jesus just heard that uh, his cousin, John the Baptist, got beheaded by King Herod. Remember the story? Uh, his wife asked for the head of John the Baptist. And so Jesus went, uh, I guess, to this uh, solitary place by himself. Uh, I would probably understand why Jesus did that. He just lost his first cousin, right? Uh, but you know, the people followed him there. Uh, I guess this is on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And that is where the miracle of feeding the 5,000, if you're familiar with that, happened. When the crowd was there, there were 5,000 men. It was a, you know, a very secluded place. There's not a lot of places to buy food. So Jesus saw that there's like five loaves of bread that this young kid brought and two fish, right? And so the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 uh, happened. And so after that, Jesus told his disciples to go ahead and cross the lake. This is the Sea of Galilee or the Lake of Galilee. And Jesus stayed behind because he wanted some more time for himself. Right? You know what happened next, right? What happened next was there was this storm while the apostles uh, or his disciples crossed the um, Sea of Galilee. And let's pick up the story. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd like to, to encourage you to open them up. The scripture is found in Matthew chapter 14. We also have uh, the passage of sto the story here uh, to facilitate our message for this afternoon. The scripture tells us in, in verses uh, 25 through 20, 33, Jesus walks on the water. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. Now bear in mind, the fourth night of the watch, um, in other translations, this is about uh, early morning, around 3 a.m. So in, in the Jewish uh, time system, the first watch starts at 6 p.m. So, and then uh, you add three more hours, that would be the second watch. watch right? So 6, 9, 12, 3 a.m., right? That's the fourth watch of the night. So, you know, this is um, in the middle of, of the evening uh, that happened, right, uh, in our story. When the disciples saw him on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost. Are you familiar with ghosts? You, you seem to, I guess most of us now are familiar with the ghost, right? <laughs> you, people nowadays love to watch horror movies. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Scripture continues in verse 27. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. In verse 28, Lord, if it's you, who do you think said that? Yes, Peter, right? Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come, right? In verse 29, then Peter got down of the boat, out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. 
and beginning to sing, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Verse 31, and when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. May the good Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Church, for the most part, we are familiar with this story, right? You have heard the story when, I guess, it's more about Peter than Jesus. Jesus walked on water, but here goes Peter, right? Just like his uh, um, impulsive nature would always say, Lord, if it is you, right? let me walk also. You know, Peter would always get uh, some sort of criticism here uh, because um, people would say that he has uh, little faith. He doubted Jesus. But let's try to, to picture this in our mind. I think most of us, if not all of us, would have this situation in our lives. Situation where there's a big challenge in our lives. We are going through the storms of life. right? And, you know, we can see something, maybe a light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe it's Jesus Christ. You know, we, we have some doubts. We have some fears. right? Uh, put that in our minds. Uh, as we give tribute to, the, to our graduates this afternoon, and let me just share with you four very important things. Right? And I'm hoping our graduates and achievers would hold on to these values right? as they embark and, and uh, endeavor in a new page, in a, in a new chapter in their lives. God has blessed them so much. God has given them the tools to be used, right? And uh, they deserve our tribute for them this afternoon. But meanwhile, let me also take this privilege and opportunity uh, to advise and counsel them through the mighty word of, uh, words of God on how they will be able to face their challenges uh, when the time comes. We can relate to this. We have all challenges in our lives. The question is not if, it's when we have challenges in our lives. We have storms in our, in our lives that we go through. And how we respond is critical. Right? How we respond is vital. Uh, to the successes that we will be able to achieve, not only in this life, but in the next life as well. Number one, four things, how we can always move forward. So the call is to keep on moving forward. Not, not because we graduated, right? That's it. Right? I'm done. I, you close your books, right? And whatever happens, happens, right? I think the challenge for us is, you know, we have these tools now that we have. God has given us these tools. And it is up to us to conquer the world. Right? When we have to have this, this right mindset in our lives. Because let me tell you, right? days will never be easier. Would you agree, church? Days will be more challenging, harder as days go by. Uh, remember, our, our goal is to cross the finish line. Right? Where is the finish line, church? Right? The finish line is not in this life. The finish line is in the pearly gates of heaven. Right? We cannot say we have crossed the finish line. Not yet. We might be near. We might have almost crossed it, but we will not cross it here in this world. So number one, the encouragement for us, let go of our fears. Let go of your fears. You know what fears can give us? Another uh, popular religious Christian lit, uh, literary writer, uh, Max Lucado, maybe you're familiar with him, said, fear doesn't want you to make the journey to the mountain. Just like our uh, illustration a while back, right? The, going to the Alps, right? Fear will not allow you to go up in the mountains. If he can rattle you enough, according to Max Lucado, fear will persuade you to take off your eyes from the peaks, from the mountain peaks, and settle for a dull existence in the flatlands. You know, we can all relate to this. We live in the valley. This is Silicon Valley, right? There's a flat portion and there's like mountainous portion. And people would always want to go up the mountains. Why? There's better view. Yeah, going to our place, when you pass, if you're familiar, going to the evergreen area, Yerba Buena is like at the tip of the hill. Right? Uh, yesterday, my son and my family were driving and I, we went up that hill and I, can so, I, I saw smog all over San Jose. <laughs> That's not good. I, I said, what, what's that haze uh, over on top of downtown San Jose? It's, it's uh, late in the afternoon and it's so hot. Cannot be fog. 
It's probably smug, right? So people are there, they can see the view, the nice view of the downtown. But fear, fear will prevent us from going to the mountaintop. Peter doubted Jesus. That's the first thing that uh, we can glean upon and learn from this portion of scriptures. In verse 30, right, if you're following, the scripture tells us, but when he saw the wind, you know, if you, Peter, when he was, uh, I guess, uh, uh, inside the boat, the winds were already blowing, the, the storms uh, are really, I guess, pushing the boat really hard, but far from, they saw someone afar and they, the disciples thought it would, who, you know, it was a ghost. And they said, uh, if, you, if it is you, Lord, right? Peter said, tell me to come. And Jesus said, come. Right? So Peter was able to, to come, to decide to come to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And he began to sink. Can you imagine this, right? Uh, Peter, together with the other disciples, doubted that the one walking on the water was Jesus. Well, this is a sad truth. Even though Peter had already seen a lot of Jesus' miracles, you think, I told you before, the background of the story, what happened before this? Jesus what? Fed 5,000. Can you imagine this? Right? And I think prior to this, they even saw Jesus perform one miracle, one right after the other. And they still doubted Jesus when they are experiencing storms in their lives. When, when fear, uh, when they're overwhelmed, overcome by fear in their lives. Right? Second, Peter took his eyes off Jesus. I think that is the reason why um, he, he sank. Right? He, be, he began to sink. Because when, when he was uh, walking on the water, his eyes was focused on Jesus. But you know, strong winds and maybe waves, right? I like to say waves, right? Waves, right? that's my last name, Alon, Alon. Right? And waves, right? Big waves, right? We're really coming to him. He took his eyes off from Jesus. Right? If I will ask you why Peter drowned in the water or began to sink, I'm sure we will all give this answer. Well, I cannot blame Peter. Because Jesus was very far from him. Right? We have all these excuses. Oh, oh yeah, he will, be, he will take his eyes off from Jesus because Jesus was still far from him. But let me just tell you, right? Fear can keep us, keep you from moving on and stepping forward. And that is the reason why Peter sank. Right? He began to experience fear in his life. Amidst Jesus there, right? Seeing Jesus, uh, providence, you know, one right after the other, seeing Jesus' miracle, one right after the other, being with Jesus now for a while, still Peter doubted Jesus. Still Peter took his eyes off from Jesus. Still Peter right, felt fear in his life. Second church, as we move along, as we continue to, to understand this story, the encouragement for all of us is to live beyond Life's convenience. I think, uh, as I mentioned to you, you know, the reason why it's called commencement exercise, it is not you know, whenever there's a graduation ceremony. It's otherwise called commencement exercise. You would, see, you would think you know, it's quite opposite. Graduation, commencement. Right? Because it's really just a start. Right? When you graduate, maybe you, some of us here, you know I'm so proud of SJCC this year because I think this year, we have the most graduates, if I'm not mistaken. And, and the age range is really, uh, really wide, right? And I'm proud of it. Yeah? We keep on studying. Uh, we keep on studying and we keep on graduating, right? Yeah. There's no end to our, I guess, pursuit for academic excellence. Keep on going. That's our message for this afternoon. Keep on moving forward, right? Uh, you don't know, your pastor might start studying again tomorrow. Right? We, we, I'm challenging everyone. Keep on studying. And later on, we're going to give tribute, right? And, uh, and we will see right? the blessing of God in our lives this afternoon. A successful life is not instantly made. It undergoes what we call a process. 
So if you look at this, the stage in the life of a butterfly, it starts from a caterpillar, right? What is that, a pupa or a cocoon, right? And then it turns into a wonderful butterfly. Remember the story, you know, what if during the time that the caterpillar is in the cocoon, right? and we have the best intention of helping the, the cocoon turn into a butterfly, and we try to tear um, the cocoon so that uh, we can free the butterfly out of it, what will happen? The, but the butterfly will never fly. We know that, right? We will be able to, I guess, our, we have our best intention of helping the caterpillar turn into a butterfly, but if you try to shortcut things in your life, right, you will take out the struggles. Because you know, if you're in the cocoon, while you're trying to break out of the cocoon, right, the butterfly, as God created, is trying to you know, move the, the wings. That's the time where the juices comes into the wing and make it strong, right? If you try to skip that by helping uh, the cocoon, uh, the, the caterpillar turn into a butterfly, take tearing out or trying to break the caterpillar, free the caterpillar from the cocoon, you miss that process, that very important process. And what will happen is the butterfly will, fly will come out, but it will never able to fly. What makes a butterfly? Butterfly? Butterfly. Butterflies flies. They fly. <laughs> and there is really a process. God made this process. Right? There is no shortcut. So failures, challenges are part of life. And the challenge for us this afternoon to move forward is to live beyond life's convenience. Peter stepped out of the boat. Can you imagine? The storm is very strong. The winds are blowing hard. You know, the challenge for Peter, so that he can walk with Jesus, the challenge for Peter, so he can walk with Jesus, he needs to step out of the boat. Where is your comfort zone, church? Right? You want, if there's a storm, and you're in the middle of the sea, oh, Pastor, I want to stay inside the boat as much as possible. Right? But Jesus is calling us, right? Jesus is calling us to walk with Him. And if we want to walk with Jesus, just like Peter, we must, we should step out of the boat. But pastors, there's a lot of you know, strong, strong winds, right? Thunderstorms, right? Lightning. Scripture tells us, then Peter got down out of the boat. So among the twelve, for example, the, all the twelve apostles were there, right? Among the twelve apostles, how many tried to step out of the boat? Church. Only one. And who stepped out of the boat? Peter. And why do we see in this passage of scriptures, we always criticize Peter of having you know, doubted Jesus. He was the only one who stepped out of the boat. And not only that, he did not only step out of the boat, Peter continued to step on. Let me ask you, was Peter able to walk on water? Church, was Peter able to walk on water? Yes. He did. Peter was the only one who was able to walk on water. Why? Because he wanted to walk with Jesus. Why? Because he stepped out of the boat. So among the twelve, he has the bragging rights of the only apostle to walk on water. We can walk on water, church. I tell you, we can walk on water if we desire to walk with God. That's the key. Live beyond life's convenience. In verse 29, we see here, 
Peter walked on water. Third thing, church, on how we can move forward in our life or in our lives, right? We need to learn from our mistakes. Right? Do we make mistakes, church? Right? Every day. Pastor Moses makes mistakes every day. I only make every other day. We make mistakes. Again, I mentioned it is not if we make mistakes. It is when we make mistakes. We will make mistakes in our lives. Failures are part of this life. And that's why I want to, to really thank God for our graduates today, for our achievers today. I'm sure you all experience failures while trying to pursue. Right? To be able to, to finish the course that now you enjoy being able to finish. But you did not stop. You kept on going. Peter saw the consequences of his mistakes. You know, just like Peter. We need to make sure we understand that when we fail, we can learn and see the consequences of our mistakes. What happened? Why did Peter he be able to really you know, see and understand that he made a mistake in his life. Because when he was walking on water, he started what? To sink. Yeah. He took his eyes all from Jesus. Right? He started to fear. The storms, the, the, you know, the blowing of the, the wind. And so he started sinking. In verse 30, he became afraid and began to sink. Failures are part of this life, church, right? Beloved, we all believe that nobody's perfect no matter how you strive for perfection. I, I, I remember the illustration, right? There's this uh, three substances. The first one is milk powder. The second one is potatoes. Right? And the third one is egg. These three can be put in hot water. Can you imagine? So what happens, church, if you put milk powder, right? into hot water. What happens? It dissolves, right? It dissolves. Get mixed up with hot water. Now you have hot milk. Right? What happens if you put potatoes into hot water? Potatoes become soft. Become soft. They become soft. What happens if you put eggs into hot water. They become hard-boiled eggs and you start eating them. Failures are part of our lives. It is how we react with failures that will allow us to move forward in life. Are we going to be like milk powders? Right? We lose our identity because failures too much for us. We cannot move on. Are we going to be like potatoes? Right? Every time we encounter challenges, we stumble and fall and we cannot move forward because we became soft. Or are we going to become like eggs and become hard-boiled eggs right? that we can weather all the challenges and storms in our lives? Right? How do we respond to challenges? And look at Peter. When he saw the consequences of his mistake, Peter saw his need for a Savior. He knew, he knew he cannot save himself. He knew he needed someone to help him. In verse 30, the scripture continues, Lord, save me. Can you imagine this? Lord, save me. The moment Peter felt his inadequacy to take further steps, he right away felt his need for help. Was Jesus there to save him? Right? Jesus was there to save him. 
when you encounter challenges in your life, right? And when you feel like you're like Peter, about to sink, to sink like Peter, when you call on Jesus and you understand you need a Savior, do you have the confidence that Jesus will be there to, be, to save you just like how He saved Peter? Do you have that confidence, church? Right? Yeah? Even in the fiercest storm or storms of your life, when you understand you need help, Peter or Jesus, just like Peter, right? his experience, he will be there. And last church, right? Look unto and lean on Jesus. So this is the story and the lesson that we can glean and learn from the life of Peter in his quest to walk on water. Focus your eyes on Jesus. So in verse 31, church, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Peter probably just for a few seconds took his eyes off from Jesus, right? Because of, of the wind that he's feeling, right? When you are walking with water, he probably felt cold. Right? He, he felt probably the waves behind or on his sides. He took his eyes off from Jesus. And that's when he started to sink. But then he realized the consequences of his mistakes and he understood his need for the Savior. That's why he turned his eyes back on Jesus, right? He looked again to Jesus and there was Jesus immediately, right? Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Why was Jesus always there for, for Peter during this, this story in his life? Right? Because he has his heart set on walking with God. Right? You need to walk with God. When, you're, when your eyes are focused on Jesus, you're telling God that you have this disposition, this, this um, resolve in your heart. To walk with God. And not only that, during the storms of our lives, remember to lean on His promises. Peter took his eyes off Jesus and that's why he sank. Right? So in verse 32 to 33, listen to this church. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped Him saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. What did the apostles need or needed so that the storms will, will be able to calm down in their lives during that time? They needed Jesus inside the boat. Right? So as soon as Jesus came into the boat, as the scripture tells us, right? The wind died down. The wind died down. That is the key. Right? To lean on the promises of Jesus. I am so excited for our graduates this afternoon. I am so excited for our achievers this afternoon. Right? And the encouragement for us in this story is to make sure right, that we should not be able to, um, that God would give us the strength, the encouragement to let go of our fears. Right? And there is this a challenge for all of us to live beyond life's convenience. And, and if just in case, and we will make mistakes in our lives, we need, and we must learn from our mistakes. But more importantly, church, more importantly, we need to continue to look unto Jesus. We need to continue to lean on His promises. And I tell you, the only way, the only way we can surpass, the only way we can weather the storms in our lives, if, we have Jesus inside our boat. If we have Jesus inside our very lives. Right? Move forward. Walk with God. Right? This will give us success as we go the distance. As we try to cross the finish line. Look unto and lean unto Jesus. For in the most difficult times, Jesus will take care of us. Right? Imagine once again, we are inside the boat in the lake of Galilee. Right? The storms are, and the winds are blowing hard. It was on the fourth night, a fourth watch of the night. 
and we are fearing for our lives. We need to cross the lake. We need to, to go to the other side right? so that we will be safe in our lives. Right? Then all of a sudden, you know, amidst the storms going on, we saw a figure out there right? walking on the water. I hope we are like Peter. Peter spoke up. Peter spoke up. Is that you, Lord? Is that you, Lord? I'm hoping we know who, who our Lord is in our lives. Right? When we go through the challenges and darkest moments in our lives, we know who we, we need to call on to. Is that you, Lord? Right? And Jesus said, It is I. Do not be afraid. Let go of our fears. It is me. Do not be afraid. What did Peter say? If, it, if it's you, tell me to come. Jesus said, come. What did Peter do? Peter stood up. He stood up. He knew that the only way right, he can come the storms in his life is if he walked with God. So Peter stood up. He stepped out of the boat. And when he stepped out of the boat, Peter was able to walk on water. God has His best plans for all of us. For our graduates, for our achievers this afternoon. His plan for you is, is greater than we can imagine. Right? Than I can imagine for you. You know, this is what, what's great about our God. Our God loves us. There's no question about that, right? He loves us. And he has our best intention at heart. You know, I am a father. I love my son. I have my best intention for my son. But my best intention for my son is nothing compared to the best intention of God, who is our father to all of us. Would you agree, church? Amen. Huh? Amen, right? And not only that, even though I have my best intention for my son, I am limited. My resources are limited. To make that a reality. For, to make my best intention a reality for my son. Because my resources are limited. I am limited. But our Heavenly Father is not limited. That's why I'm excited for all of us. God loves us. He has our best intention at heart. And He has the power to make it a reality for all of us. Only, only if we want to walk with God, just like Peter. So I ask you, maybe you are here not by chance. Maybe you are going through the storms of your lives today. Maybe you don't know how you can go through the storms of your life. One lightning after another, right? One thunderstorm after another. But you came to this place and, and you saw that someone walking on the water. And you wanted right, the storms in your life, to, you know, just like in our story, to die down. To stop. So that you can overcome your challenges. I challenge you this afternoon. The only way you can do that is to walk with God. And church, how do you walk with God? You walk with God right now by standing up, right? fixing your eyes on Jesus, and started, start walking up front, just how Peter walked on water, and receive Him as Lord and Savior of your life today. And I tell you, I tell you, Jesus is the only one you need to calm the storms of your life. Are you ready to give glory to God, church? Right? Let's all stand up.
While singing this song, I would like to extend this invitation.